I think you'd have to be Nostradamus to know what's going to happen in 2012. Um, I think what we're preparing for is volatility. Is this another 2008? Um, I think pertinent to the energy sector is that whilst the long-term trends and demands for commodities, natural resources, oil, gas are huge uh, and therefore are driving huge growth and development in the sector, another serious global recession um, could bring things to a bit of a halt. Um, so we are quietly trying to be as positive as possible, um, but I think preparing ourselves for quite a lot of volatility. I think, um, actually, we, we found this last time. You know, when projects stop or a sector sort of freezes for a short period as finance dries up, talent, you've got to hold on to your talent or you've got to stay in touch with your talent because as we found in 2008, 2009, 2008 things froze but very quickly in the second half of 2009 credit started rolling into the energy sector. Companies were looking for people to make the projects uh, happen and to staff up their, um, their companies. So I think if you've let lots of people go or if you don't know how to access them, the talent, you will be uh, slow to get to the starting track. So our job, if there is another downturn, is very much to maintain real contact with the talent in the sector. So the sector can move very, very quickly if there is a huge upswing again. I think, I think sometimes a number of sectors, particularly the natural resources sector, can operate on a sort of a stop, go, stop, go. Um, if that happens again, which it certainly did in 2008, 2009, um, firms such as ours will need to be ready to ensure that the talent that will leave the industry and can be readily redeployed uh, once things go back on to go again. By the way, they're on go very much at the moment, but uh, you know, we should wait and see what 2012 begins. Yes. I mean, I think you should, um, it should be one of your top priorities. Uh, I think sometimes yeah, it's very easy to say that. Uh, the, the, the CEO will have a huge intray, huge challenges maybe around financing, but if you can't get the people, and if you can't get the expertise, you're not going to get the projects to happen. So I think you need to take a strategic view. You need to be looking at the, the talent you've got in your organisation and uh, seeing how you develop it and communicate that to your team. That they've got a real future and, and, and there is a real development plan. And this is where, where we, or I, the CEO, or HR are going to see you going. I think if you're in, in real growth mode, you need to, um, and this is a bit of a plug for Corn Ferry or the other providers, you need to have a partner, not just on a one-off relationship, but a partner that can help you identify and unlock all the sources of the talent. For the industry as a whole, there's a talent crunch coming. Um, those 10, 15 years in the, in the 80s and the 90s when the industry didn't recruit as many graduates, um, that is leading to a shortfall of, of seasoned leaders in the sector. So the industry needs to be trying to really you know, strongly encourage new entrants and graduates to come into the sector because they will be needed. I think they've got to, the industry as a whole has got to know that the long term, he knows that long term trends are for growth that the world hasn't yet found an alternative to the resources that we use today to power our globe, um, and that it needs the people in the industry to come through, so it needs to be encouraging graduates to, to come in, sponsoring programs in universities. It could well be looking at encouraging a lot of technical graduates or technical skilled the people that have qualified in engineering who went into banking and now may be looking for alternative careers, and then to be skillful and deft in, in training people up to do the kind of leadership tasks in the industry. Um, because it is clear that a lot of talented engineering graduates and science graduates did go into investment banking or have done in the last 10 years. Uh, I mean, the oil industry offers a uh, the mining sector offers actually quite a good lucrative alternative. Um, so I think the sector needs to try, if you are thinking as you have to, you have to have your eyes on the short term, the short term challenges of, of finance and financing the project, and what the global market's doing. But if you want, if you, if, if you are CEO of, a, of an energy company and you want to have a future, you've got to be keeping a, a long term strategic view on the talent pipeline as well as the project pipeline. And it's something certainly the Oil Council, um, members of the Oil Council can be looking at. How do we attract people to the industry? How do we retain people?
the industry? How do, how do we have a pipeline for the next in 20 years' time? The industry doesn't have the doesn't make the same mistakes that it made in the 90s.